Hi everyone, Karibuni Sana. Uh, it, it's good and it's a pleasure just for you to join us this morning. Even as we go through the scripture, as we go through the word of God, just to be able to hear more on what God has in store for us this day. And I want to begin just by sharing my own personal experience, uh, just before we go into the word of God, that will be able to point us to what I'm sharing with us this, uh, this day. Growing up as a young boy, or as a teenager, as a young person, I remember we had uh, various heroes, people that we consider to be, you know, unbeaten. And I remember would actually meet together, sit down and even argue almost the whole day who is good, who is better than who, you know. And uh, some of these guys included, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, we had uh, John Rambo, we had, uh, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme. And so these were guys that most of us would look at and even emulate. And as I speak uh, this day, I know most of us probably cannot or may not be able to relate with the guys I've mentioned, but just to bring us into a context, I know we have people like Thor or Thor, depending on where you went to school. We have people like Hulk, you know, Batman, Superman. So these are guys, you know, we look at as our heroes, we look at as people who cannot be defeated. You know, anytime we sit down, we can easily predict and say, by the way, Batman or Superman is going to just you know, kick this guy down and all that stuff. And also going back to the world of football, you know, most of us are football fanatics or supporters. We have teams that, you know, we support and we believe down deep our hearts that these teams cannot be defeated. We can sit down and argue the whole day, defend our teams and war unto you when that team of yours loses. Some of us even go without food, go, you know, have sleepless nights. Sometimes it's funny how, you know, we mimic some of these guys or mimic some of these teams, you know, when they lose. And so... Um, when you look at all these things, I think one of the things that actually, you know, happens is that we associate ourselves with these people or with these teams because we have the confidence that these teams are better than any other. But the question I want to pose to us as young people is how comes then, you know, it becomes more difficult to talk about Christ. In other words, even when we talk about Christ as young people, we don't have the confidence, you know, talking about Jesus Christ, you know, when we meet as young people, when we meet with our peers, even including some of us Christians, we don't we don't talk about Jesus Christ. We barely, you know, create or have time to talk about Jesus Christ. But this morning, I'm able to help us understand why we should be proud to talk about Christian, why we should have the confidence to talk about Christ, why we should have the boldness even to talk about Christ more than these other heroes, more than these other people or teams we consider to be more powerful than other people. And so this morning, by the grace of God, I'll be helping us to understand how powerful Christ is, how powerful he is even above all these other things or above, above these other people. And so today I'm speaking to us about the supremacy of Christ Jesus, the supremacy of Christ Jesus. And maybe before I go to the scriptures, I know most of us could be asking ourselves, what does it mean to be supreme? Supreme, it basically means the highest authority of the land. In other words, there's no authority above that. And as we look at the Kenyan's you know, judicial system, we have Supreme Court as the highest organ that passes judgment. If someone is judged not maybe based on how they, they expect the judgment to go, they usually appeal to the High Court, and then if the High Court is not able to handle the matter, then it is taken to the Supreme Court, which is the highest organ. And so today I'll be speaking about Jesus Christ being the Supreme Being. In other words, He is the highest authority. There is no other authority above Him. And so we're looking at the book of Colossians, Paul writing the letter of Col uh, the letter of Colossians to the church in Colossae. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse, uh, verse uh, 15 to 19, this is what the Bible says. It says this, this is Paul says, uh, speaking to the church in Colossae, he said, The Son, that is Jesus Christ, uh, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible or invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in all and in him all things hold together. Verse 18, he, he, he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased, verse 19, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, that is Christ Jesus. But allow me to paint a picture of where Paul was coming from. You know, 
during his time, which I believe is no different from wherever we are, Paul actually and the church in Colossae lived at a time when there's so much philosophical arguments about Jesus and his supremacy, his humanity, and there was a lot of false teachings going around the, 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 the church. In other words, the church was being slowly and slowly being diluted by the false teachings that were coming from outside. And as I look at us as young people, I know we've heard about so many theories about who Christ is. Some people say he was a great teacher, but was he really just a teacher? Some people argue and say that Jesus was just a philosopher, but was he really just a philosopher? There are those who argue and say that Jesus was just a carpenter. I mean, you see, reducing Jesus to the point of being a carpenter, which of course, he helped his parents in doing so. But the question then we need to ask ourselves, was Jesus just what people tend to describe? That is the question that we need to ask ourselves. And so when we find this, when we discover the truth about who Christ is or who Christ was, then that will also be able to give us the confidence to be able to talk about him without any fear, without any doubt, because we know, like Paul says, in whom we have believed. And so this church in Colossae was being faced with so many false teachings, philosophy that going, was going on around them that was actually taking them to the verge of giving up in their faith and in their salvation. And as I talk about the supremacy of Christ, him being the highest authority, it is very clear that anyone who would actually try to bring himself or attempt to raise himself above Jesus Christ, something would happen. And a very good example is the devil himself. The devil is walking in heaven and he decides, it was actually a thought and he says, I will exalt myself above God. The moment the devil thought about that, the Bible says that he was cast down. In other words, he wanted to start a coup in heaven, only to realize that there was a man in charge of heaven and that was God. And the Bible says he was thrown down on earth. A very good example also, King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he's conquered the entire universe. He's walking around and he says, you know what, this is what I have done with my own power and authority. And the Bible says the guy was thrown into the forest. Despite him being a king, he was thrown into the forest for seven years, eating grass. A guy who was filthy rich, I mean, he could afford probably even an entire bull, an entire, you know, an entire goat just to slaughter and eat at his own pleasure. But God decides that, hey, listen, you have to know that there's someone who is in charge of this. The man who is in charge of the entire universe and that is god himself so the guy is thrown into the forest and eats grass for seven years non-stop simply because he thought that he's more powerful than god himself and so paul points out a number of things that i want to share with us that makes christ to be more supreme not to be more to be supreme or to be above all these other things that we think of or all these other people we talk about and the first thing that paul speaks about jesus christ that he is god jesus christ is god and in verse 15 he says that he is the image of the invisible god what that means is that god was not or rather jesus was not created in the image of god like it was for man in Genesis chapter 2, God talks about, let us create man in our own image. So he creates man in his own image. But unlike Jesus, the Bible says, he is the image of the invisible God. In other words, when we see Jesus Christ, we see God himself. So Jesus was no less than God himself. They are equal. And that is where most of us tend to go wrong, where we think that God the Father is more powerful than Jesus Christ. But let me, just, let me submit to us that Jesus, Jesus himself is God. He is God and there is nothing arguable or debatable about it. He is God. And he makes these claims a number of times in the book of, I believe, John, where he says, I and, the, I and the Father are one. In other words, they are one. They are compatible. And at some point, I think it was... Philip who asked Jesus, show us the Father. And Jesus looks at Philip and tells him, hey, listen, if you see me, you have seen the Father. In other words, Jesus trying to paint a picture that he is God and that there is no one else like him. And so that is the first thing that Paul points out that makes Christ to be supreme, that he was not just a philosopher. He was not just a great teacher. He is God himself, the creator of everything. And so this morning i want to or rather this day i want to submit to us that christ is god and verse 19 echoes the same word where he says that it pleased god that his fullness may dwell in jesus christ in other words when jesus christ was walking on this earth he was a full representation of godhead when jesus walked on this earth he was not just a man but he was also a hundred percent god anytime you walk around he was he was usually or he's usually a representation of God without any shadow of doubt. So the first thing that makes Christ to 
should be most to him above all these other things and above all these other people that we talk about he is god but the other thing that paul points out that makes christ to be supreme is that he is the creator of everything verse 16 to 17 he says that in him for him and through him were all things created and allow me to use an analogy of the phone that i have in my hand this phone is mine. I bought it. In other words, I have the authority over this phone. This phone can never have authority over my life or over me. The same thing when the Bible talks about Jesus having created everything and everything having created through him, it simply means that Jesus Christ has authority over everything. Jesus has authority over everything. And Paul mentions a number of things. Number one, he says the creation. In other words, whatever is including us, we are his creation. And so Jesus Christ has authority over our lives. He has authority over the nature. And no wonder sometimes he would command nature and nature would obey him. He would command sicknesses and sicknesses would obey him because Jesus Christ is the creator of everything that we see and everything that we have. But the other thing that Paul points out this, this, this day is that Jesus Christ not only did he create everything that we see but he also creates authority he created authority in other words there is no authority that will ever be established without his approval there is no authority that will ever be established in our lives or in the land that we are in without jesus's approval he is the one who approves everything that we see here he's the one who approves people to be in governments, people to be in leadership. He is the one who created everything. And allow me to submit to us this, this, this day that, as a matter of fact, even the devil himself is God's creation. The devil was created by God. He is actually his. We say sometimes, shetani ni wamun. You see, that is what we say. The devil belongs to God. He is his creation. And so he has no authority. He has no authority over Jesus Christ because he was created. He's the hand, he's the work of his hands. And so that is the other thing that Paul points out that for us to be able to understand that Jesus Christ created everything. And he says that through him, in other words, through Jesus Christ, through him, it is through him that everything was created. And not only that, Paul says it is for him. Somewhere the Bible says that we are actually the sheep of his pasture. We belong to Jesus Christ because he created us in his own image the bible says with his own hands he created us he spoke and the universe came into being he spoke and the animals came into being that is how powerful jesus christ is in other words he created everything everything that you ever come across sometimes we argue and say by the way you know we created this and this but allow me to say this that the bible says there is nothing new under the sun whatever we see man creating is actually as a result of the wisdom that comes from jesus christ and so there's nothing there's nothing we can ever say even science itself by the way science is there to complement what is in the bible and so even science itself does not discover what is not in the bible it simply discovers what was there before what jesus christ created and so that puts science at a point where it just complements the word of God. Meaning that Jesus Christ, who is the Alpha and Omega, who created everything, was there even before science itself. And so the number two things that Paul says this, this day that will help us to have confidence in the supremacy of Jesus Christ is that Jesus Christ, he is the creator of everything that we see and will ever see and including us, including the power and the authority that is established even in the land where we are. But the other thing, the third thing that actually Paul points out that helps us to appreciate the supremacy of Christ is the fact that he is the head of the church. Allow me to repeat that, that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. There is no man, there is no man, actually it is Jesus Christ who died for the church. There is no one else, there will be no one else who will ever die for the church or redeem the church. Jesus Christ died for the church and that gives him the privilege and the right to be able to help the church. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. And when I talk about the church, I know most of us are thinking of the buildings where we go to, but allow me to submit to us that the church is you and I. We belong to him. He is our head. He is our head. And when we talk about Jesus Christ being the head, he's the one who calls shots. He's the one who leads us. He's the one who is able to direct us. But many other times we argue right, left, and center. Who belongs to who? 
the church belongs to who? I mean, it is very clear and very categorical this, this day that Paul says that Jesus Christ, he is the head of the church. And no wonder he says that in him we move, live, and have our, have our being in the book of Acts. Paul arguing to, with the, or rather addressing the philosophers, he tells them that, hey, listen, it is through Jesus Christ we live, move, and have our being. Our lives revolve around Christ. Without Christ, we are nothing. Jesus Christ is our head. He holds everything else together. You can imagine without your head, where, where will you go? What will you see? I mean, there will be no vision. There will be no directions. There will be no thinking. In other words, Jesus Christ, him being the head of the church, he's able to give us directions and the vision of our lives. He's able to order our footsteps. He's able to see and guide us where he so desires. And so Jesus Christ, Paul says, is the head of the church. And that is so powerful and very important for us to understand as Christians. Because many are the times we give ourselves to Jesus or our life to Jesus. But we cease to follow him. In other words, we want to live our own lives. We want to live the way we feel like. But if Jesus Christ is truly the head of your, the head of your life, then you'll be able and you'll be willing to submit to him because you know that you are because Jesus Christ is. Without Jesus Christ, we are nothing. Without Jesus Christ, you and I, we are nothing. Without Jesus Christ, the church ceases to exist. Without Jesus Christ, the church has no meaning, has no significance, will, be, will have no impact. But, but because of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, he gives us the reason to live and he motivates us to be able to follow through life. And so three things that I want to again highlight that makes us know and have the confidence in Christ Jesus just before I come to the implication of what I've shared with us, that it is that, number one, that Jesus Christ is God. He is God. But secondly, Paul says that he is the creator. Thirdly, Paul says that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. You and I belong to him. He's the one who's at work within our lives. And so then you could be there and ask me, by the way, you've shared all these things, but then what is the implication of it all? What is the implication of what you've shared about us, you know, with us about the supremacy of Christ? Number one is that Jesus Christ is all-powerful. He's all-powerful. He cannot be equated with anyone. You cannot put Jesus Christ with the league of the heroes we so watch in the movies. We cannot put Jesus Christ with the same pedestal with anyone else. Jesus Christ, he is on his own level. He's all-powerful. And when I say he's all-powerful, he's all-powerful. He has all the power in the entire universe. And he says his powers he shares with no one. And so Jesus Christ is all-powerful. The fact that he's a creator, it simply means that he holds the power in his hands. In other words, at the snap of his hand, you could be probably be gone at this moment. That is how powerful Jesus Christ is. He's, he's, he controls the universe. He controls the entire universe, the things that we see, the things that the science, scientists speak about. Jesus Christ is the one who controls them because he is the creator and he's all powerful. But the other thing is that not only is Jesus Christ powerful, but he holds everything together. And sometimes we feel like Jesus Christ or God created the universe, then he stood aloof. But allow me to say this, that Jesus Christ is concerned and is always, he's always concerned and even, you know, he's always, uh, let me say, he's always uh, involved in the entire creation. So anytime you see something happens, even the so-called, you know, Katrina, the earthquakes and all that, God is also concerned. And the interesting thing is, did you know that even, even uh, from the time the sun was created, it has never moved an inch? Did you know that? It has never moved an inch. It is still where it was when the creation started. The same as the moon. That basically implies how God is involved in the work of creation. So God is involved in everything that actually he created, including your life, your very own life. That as much as God is all-powerful, he's also involved and concerned about you. And the best we can do is that we need to put our confidence in this powerful God, in this God who cares about us and who cares about our lives. But thirdly, that thirdly, what this implies or what this means in our lives is that Jesus Christ is the only name we can ever call and involve in our situations and they will permanently change. Jesus Christ is the only person and the only name that we can involve in our situation and the situations will permanently change. Allow me to say this. I know we have many other names that we call to, 
There are very many other names we cry out to when we are in trouble or when things are going wayward. But allow me to say this again, that not unless you get to the point whereby you involve the name of Jesus in your situation, where you get to call on the name of Jesus who is all-powerful, your situation may not change, or if it changes, probably it's for a season. But for the season, for the situation to be able to change permanently, you must bring in Jesus Christ to be able to come through for you. And I believe this morning or this day probably I could be speaking to someone who is wondering, by the way, what does Jesus have to do with my life? What does Jesus have to do with my life? Allow me to say this, that Jesus loves you. He loves you. And that is why that despite him being God, despite him reigning and ruling in all this majesty, Jesus Christ himself came down to your level, to my level. He considered equality with God nothing to grasp, but he came down and he was able to humble himself to the point of even dying on the cross, a very shameful death very shameful death. Jesus Christ hung on that cross naked because he had you in mind, he had me in mind despite him knowing that he is the highest being that we can ever, ever, ever experience or come across. And so Jesus hangs on that cross despite him being God, simply because he loves you and he loves me. He actually laid down his what I say prestigious, uh, pre, you know, prestigious or prestige. He laid down his authority or rather he laid down not real authority he laid down his life for your sake and my sake and so i want to i want to submit to you this morning or this day that jesus christ loves you and he would want to be part of your life this big god this powerful god the head of the church would want to be part of your life and that is possible when you simply open up your heart and say jesus i open up my heart to allow you to be my Lord and to be my Savior. And so I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you this day as I come to a conclusion. If you are there and you want to receive this, this Jesus Christ into your heart, you just say a simple prayer, but you have to mean it and believe it in your heart. Then you'll be able to come and dwell in you and dwell with you because he is God with us, God Emmanuel. And when you do that, you become part of him and he'll become part of you. So why don't you repeat this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you, I want to bless you for dying for me on the cross, despite being God and despite, Lord, being the holder of the universe. And right now, I repent of my sins and I accept you to be my Lord and to be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Allow me to pray for you that this morning the Lord will be able to reveal the, the majesty the awesomeness, the, his power over your life. Even as a Christian, maybe you've never experienced the power of Jesus Christ. I pray that in the name of Jesus, you'll be able to experience his power, his majesty in your life, even as you serve him and as you live for him as a young person. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you and I want to bless you. I pray, Lord, that indeed you'll be able to reveal your power, majesty over our lives, O King of all glory. I thank you for reminding us of how supreme, how powerful you are and that there is no other God. There is no argument about it. You alone are God and there is none, Lord Jesus. And so this, after this day, oh God, I want to pray that, Lord, for my friends who could be there, Lord, who have never probably been able to grasp of your power and supremacy in their lives, Lord, would you reveal your power? Would you reveal your majesty in their lives, O oh God, for them to be able to understand of who you are in their lives, O oh God, and that they ought not to live as people who are powerless, people who are subjected to any other things, O oh God, because, Lord, you are all-powerful. And so we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you very much. And remember that Jesus Christ reigns in supremacy. Amen.